Welcome back to the Regimentals YouTube channel. Um, in today's video, um, more of the same. I have bought lots of new items, uh, been over to Europe. We've managed to get into a big combat collection um, and we're gradually getting bits out. So things are coming to us um, every two weeks new really exciting items and also um, in and amongst this lot there's there's items which I sold many years ago um, lots of things from that I had in my own Africa core collection which is coming back to us um, which is just fantastic um, because I always regretted selling them at the time and it's brilliant for me to have the opportunity to to sell them once again especially with the authenticity of them being um, in the book that I produced so um, I'm going to get straight into it because there's lots of things to show you um, usual thing um, if you see something here um, and you want to come straight to the source rather than wait for the update then just get in touch with me um, so uh, I'm just gonna pick stuff up as I see it first of all going on to the website is this lovely um, Bevo uh, Reichsführer SS cuff title really nice thing hard to get it's been combat used you can see it's been taken off of a tunic um, some lovely panzer caps um, these two two panzer caps going in really nice officers one and then this is almost like a, a, a crusher style with no with no chin cord they're really nice um, this is a very rare cap a white top uh, Luftwaffe cap but what's fantastic about this is it's the green the apple green piping now um, some collectors won't be familiar with what apple green piping on Luftwaffe caps is of course most of you know that on um, army caps the, the, the apple green represents panzer grenadier it represents a very rare unit called the air, it's basically air traffic control um, and very hard to get lovely condition that as well uh, then we have here some helmets so i'm going to go straight in with this one this is a lovely um, m35 helmet with an interesting camouflage on it blotches of green and tan but lovely to see that the decal is still there quite often on camouflage helmets you you lose the decal completely complete with its strap and soldier's name inside um, and then the other helmets that I have there is this lovely um, M40 but beautiful condition strap lovely interior and a lovely crystal clear decal on it as well similar to this one here this one has slight pitting on the shell uh, but still the decal is superb the strap and the inside is all really nice so um, I am getting quite low in stock on helmets so it's nice to have two in such fantastic condition. Um, people will notice that the price of um, helmets going up in you know in value uh, at the moment, usually because you know when I get short of stock, it means that the price um, has to go up because they're just selling too quickly. Um, then finally, this helmet here um, is beautiful chicken wire now. It can be quite controversial the chicken white helmets because they're they're quite easy to fake but there is a specific look that people like to see especially they look at the twists of the chicken wire and how many twists there are and and the condition of the helmet underneath the chicken wire this one here is fantastic lovely decal on it as well um, and hopefully in the video here showing some close-up pictures of the chicken wire to give you an idea of what to look for when when you're buying a helmet with chicken wire uh, a simple thing like like the basket um, can triple or double the value of one of these so you have to be really careful with what you're looking at and what you're buying this um, appears to be something quite simple a binocular case it's empty um, but what this actually is is this is the rare binocular case which holds the late war Bakelite binoculars they're like a brown an earth brown um, material very late war and I think this is actually dated 44 and it's the the construction of this binocular case is much thicker um, than the normal ones that you would see that's how you can spot it recently we sold a pair of the long um, Luftwaffe paratroopers gloves and here is another pair of, of, of paratrooper gloves these aren't the long version um, but still very hard to get um, always popular for paratrooper collectors I've recently just found so many fantastic paratrooper items um, there's a lovely uh, uh, Luger holster going on and then this is a beautiful assault gun wrap really really nice the Panzer Grenadier insignia on it obviously for, for the assault gunners um, really nice little tradition badge there on the lapel and the, uh, the, the, the maker stamp inside with the size and the date I think it's 43 um, 
but you know these are extremely hard to find and obviously the price is, is getting up to nearly five thousand pounds for for one of those and go to go with that what is really nice is that i've got two pairs of assault gun trousers as well one worn pair really nice uh, being their condition the nice baggy blouse style with the interesting uh, uh, hems at the bottom and then I've got this absolutely mint pair um, they're absolutely unused lovely maker inside stamp markings inside RB number but just absolutely perfect condition beautiful buttons on it as well the I'd say that the, if, you, if anyone was thinking of buying both trousers and jacket and making a set I actually think that the the warm set I'm just looking at them now to see which would make a, a, a more perfect set yeah, it's hard to say. Either one of the trousers would go beautifully with that jacket. But assault gun stuff is extremely hard to get. And here is a, um, a helmet cover. Now, uh, this is, this is uh, the, the tan and water helmet cover for the, Army, for the Army helmet. Usually you see the splinter pattern. The tan and water uh, cover is actually harder to find um, than the splinter one but it's not as popular with collectors, so the price is slightly lower. Uh, an item which you would say, again, was easily faked, but this, this is a specific type of material. It's so thin. When you rub your fingers across the material, you can just feel how thin that material is. If I pull that uh, you know, with any strength, I could rip it with my bare hands. There's a few little field repairs on it, but when you see this on our website, on a helmet, um, creating its form it just looks absolutely fantastic it would look brilliant on a combat mannequin and you know not expensive they're, they're just under a thousand pounds which is a lot cheaper than the splinter pattern version speaking of splinter pattern I'll move on to this oversmock now again this is an item that not many people will be familiar with um, it's an army splinter pattern oversmock and it was worn by the gross deutschland divisions the last one of these i sold to a customer of mine in australia for about five thousand pounds um, extremely extremely rare I can't stress to you enough how hard these are to find this is the second one that I've had in the last 20 years um, and you know there's there's not much to say about it in terms of construction it's a very simple garment um, I have an expert who I travel to Germany with um, and he knows these inside out he's had many of them in his time or handled many of them in his time so he knew exactly what he was looking for and he helped me uh, guide me to make sure that this is the original piece it's an absolutely stunning thing so then here I've got two lovely cuff titles I have the black uh, the unofficial black Africa Corps officers cuff title there they are extremely hard to find and this one really does it for me this is a um, officers bullion Africa Corps with Africa with palms cuff title and yes it's worn um, but it just has that been there used it's such a fantastic item I really like that um, takes me back to when I was collecting Africa this is the kind of thing that I would definitely keep if I was back collecting Africa Corps again and this cap here um, is in my book um, that I produced and it's a cavalry overseas cap um, lovely stampings inside but look how faded that is and when I got this I actually got it with um, a, a cavalry reconnaissance tunic which I sold through the website a few a few months ago and sometime I'd like to reunite this with the, with the tunic I, I sold I sold the tunic to a customer in Spain and I'm sure if he sees this video he might be after this however my father has actually um, said that he wants to buy it for his own collection so you know that's going to stay um, with me for a little while but it's just a fantastic thing because I was there um, at the show when the veterans uh, grandson brought this in and sold it over the table at a show in Germany so because I know the history of it it's just nice for me to see it back here in the office um, another bleached Africa core item more sentimental value this was the very very first Africa core item that I ever bought for myself when I started collecting it was about 2000 it, no yeah, it was about year 2000 2001 um, a fellow dealer um, who's since retired um, sent over a box of stuff that he wanted to sell and um, in there was this matched pair of bleached uh, tunic and cap 
the cap had officer's braiding on it. Uh, it, was a, it was a peaked cap with officer's braiding, but this lovely faded tunic with so much wear, when you lift the pockets, you can see the original color. And of course, my favorite part is on the back where you can see where the soldier um, had had the, the tunic taken in at some point to, to fit him better. And now since it's been let out and you can see the, the original color of the tunic underneath there. A really fantastic thing with loads of sentimental value for me. Another African cord tunic I used to own is this very rare um, Sondervaban 288 tunic. Now, again, if you're not familiar with what the Sondervaban 288 were, they were um, a special unit formed in Africa of German special forces. Um, they were kind of a, li a little bit like the long range desert group. Um, they were kind of not unofficial, but they, they had license to do what they want and sabotage certain things behind enemy lines. So the mystical story of the, the Sonder Van 288, it kind of um, it increases value to anything that was used or worn by them. I've had sold books and bear passes in the past with lots of 288 um, notifications in there about, about those units. Um, and you do see these, these arm patches around unissued, but this one here um, has always been on this tunic. Um, I owned this tunic many years ago, so I know I know its history. It's got lovely Panzer Grenadier shoulder straps on it, original shoulder straps as well, and that is just a fantastic, fantastic thing. Um, if anyone who loves the theatre of, of of what happened in Africa, um, keeping on that track, these are very rare. They're not necessarily Africa; they were used uh, in Normandy and in the Ardennes as well, all through the late war. But this is the yellow pressed off um, shovel cover. Now they look fantastic on, on, on um, Africa Corps mannequins if you're building a whole equipment set. But like I said, they were used by everyone uh, anywhere between like 43 onwards really. Um, equipment wise, this is a very rare item. This, I featured recently a lot of the blue Luftwaffe items. I've had some tunics and caps. And this is the blue webbing um, A-frame. Now all the elements on it are blue. Some parts are faded, some parts are not. Um, and also in, these, in the video here, I've tried to show various elements of it so you can get a good picture of how it's made and, and what it's made of. You know, to have a blue, fully blue constructed one, sometimes people see gray ones. They were made late war, but this is a blue one. Yes, it, parts of the blue are faded, but this is a, a blue A-frame and extremely rare. And Africa Core Steel, they have, we have for here this unissued um, second pattern tunic um, just for the novice collectors um, just so you know I'll point this out while we're here you might have seen it before in one of my videos just so you know um, pleated pockets here on the breast and the lower pockets if they have a pleat in it it's considered first pattern so it would be used 1940 to 1943 and then second pattern came along with no pleats in the pockets um, and these were from 43 onwards this one in fact dated 43 um, but what's interesting about this garment is that the pockets, uh, the upper pockets, just the, just the upper pockets, are made from a different material to the rest of the tunic. So again, uh, a case of uh, later on in the war, they're using as many scraps as they can. They find a piece of material on the factory floor and they just put it onto the tunic. They don't care at this point whether it's all matching colours, but you can definitely see the contrasting colour of the pocket uh, to the rest of the tunic. But it's unissued condition, lovely eagle collar patches, um, and then this fantastic um, factory label inside, um, still attached to it. Of course, no shoulder boards with it because uh, unissued, it would never have been given shoulder boards. They would have been issued later when it was assigned to a certain regiment division or soldier. Um, here we have a full set, matching set, um, M44 tunic and trousers. Now, um, Again, for, 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 the, for the beginners, you'll notice this is the M44 model and it's very much like the British battle dress blouse, the same style, and they modelled it on what we were doing with our battle dress. Much shorter, um, but this is a lovely condition set with nice um, artillery uh, slip-ons on the artillery shoulder boards there. Um, fantastic thing for someone just wanting to build a mannequin and just go straight in and get the jacket and trousers at the same time. And then lastly, I wanted to switch away from uh, World War II and move to World War I just because I have this lovely First World War 1910 officers Württemberg um, generals tunic. Now, what's nice about this, I know I was talking about nostalgia and some items coming back to us. 
This is a tunic which we bought many years ago um, when we bought a massive collection in, in Arizona called the Marshall Doubt Collection. And this one was from the Marshall Doubt Collection. And when my father um, did his book, which is huge, um, Field Grey, he actually featured this tunic in the book. So uh, again, a nice, nice to see an item which has been documented in books because it always adds value. Um, speaking of books, just to let you know, my, my latest book, which is called Stahl Schutz Helm, um, it's about the history of the German helmet from its conception right through um, to the end of uh, World War One. All about the brow plates, the, the experimentals, the early M16. That is nearly um, gone to print. It should be out and released in November. I am taking pre-orders for that, but just to warn you, it's not going to be out until some point in November. Uh, it looks very, very good and it's going to be a very popular book. Um, so that's it with stock. I just wanted to ask a favor. Um, now, if you are uh, one of our older collectors, uh, you, you won't have a clue what I'm talking about, but this really is a favor that I'm asking for my younger collectors, or if any of you guys have got children or grandchildren. Um, I've been very successful with my YouTube videos. Um, it's, it's really helped my business and helped my profile. And my son, who's nine, he's seen uh, the process of, of how I've got on with YouTube videos. And he decided, decided to start his own YouTube channel about something completely different, which is, as most kids do, gaming, computer games. Um, so what I wanted to ask a favour, if you have time, please um, can you check out my son's YouTube channel, which is called Archie Games. And if you can, subscribe to his channel or get your children or grandchildren to subscribe to his channel. I'd really appreciate it. Um, please let me know if you've, if you've checked out his channel or subscribed to it, because, you know, I'll, I'll repay the favour for you in some way. The next item you buy, I'll throw in some free shipping or something like that. I always remember um, who does me favours. So uh, I know I'm waffling on. So that's my last request. If you can just check out his YouTube channel for me. Um, so that's it. We are updating the uh, website on Friday as normal, but we've moved it to Friday evening. So it kind of helps out the people who are um, over in America. You can you can not have to get up early and check your phone or, or, or your computer early because I'm doing the updates UK time in the evening. So um, check out the, um, the, the update on Friday. Keep watching the channel. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And hopefully we'll see you soon.